Hey YouTubers and welcome back to another episode here on ESGN Net, uh, the Dallas Cowboys franchise and this is the Cowboys Insider and this is episode number 26 as we're taking a quick review here of week 3. So what a crazy, uh, uh, just a pretty good game there for, for the most part there for the Cowboys this week as you see there they are now 3-0 and uh entering or exiting week three here and getting ready to uh, play the uh, colts here before we get to that we'll see here james winston 20 of 33 60 percent of his passes are completed he had two interceptions and one touchdown he had a rough day there we we're able to put the well, no not necessarily the exact pressure on him uh but we put just enough there uh, to get him to get shooken up there at times there. For us, uh, Prescott there, 9 of 19, 217 yards, 47% of his passes were complete. Not the best day in, at all here, but um, and he did throw one interception. In there, but for the most part there, uh, the Cowboys... Uh, did a uh, defense really helped us out there for the for the most part there. They had uh, two interceptions there that went back for... Uh, yeah... Or no, one interception went back for a pick six there. The other one was called back. But the thing was for us on defense there was Mike Evans. He had a great game there, over 170 yards uh, with eight care, eight receptions there from him. He had a great game there. And unfortunately, you know, he didn't wasn't able to get in the or fortunately he wasn't able to get in the end zone there. But for the most part there, uh, he had a really good job there. Just uh, really they just did a really good job there confusing us uh, in the uh, in the coverage there for him. And uh, that's something we just cannot allow to happen uh, coming up in the next uh, couple of weeks or for the rest of the season there. Uh, but Zeke Elliott, 15 carries, 97 yards, a fumble, uh, and a bro four broken tackles. Uh, McFadden, 7 carries, 44 yards, and a broken tackle. Uh, Swim, uh, he had two receptions and uh, 26 yards. Uh, Cole Beasley had one reception, 19 yards, and had two uh, drop passes, one of them being a fumble. And I don't understand why that is the deal here. Um, and I was talking to coaches there, and they said that, hey, you know, if he uh, keeps doing that here, there's a good chance that he could be demoted. Um, and they're going to bring up uh, some of the other younger guys there that we have in our receiving core there. But Beasley, I just don't understand. I thought we fixed that from last season there. Uh, apparently not the case. But we'll see Hannah there. He's going to be out for seven weeks there. We did have that injury there. We find out to be it was him. Uh, dislocated ankle. He's going to be out for seven weeks, and so that's going to hurt us there in the uh, in the tight end situation here. Uh, so Swim will have to come in, and he'll step up there as he did uh, in the game. Uh, Des Bryant had a big game there. Two receptions, 68 yards, two or one touchdown there. Not a you know not a you know humongous day. Uh, just take a look here at the standings there. But for the most part there, he did a great job. There was one deep pass that he took and took to the house there. Um, you know, not you know, he didn't have triple digit numbers there for for yardage there, but he did have some pretty good catches there for us that helped us out quite a bit. Uh, and the same thing goes for Ryan Switzer. He had that big catch there, uh, 49 yards there. I think it was a touchdown uh, reception there he got. Uh, so two touch, or two receptions, 56 yards, and one touchdown there for him. So nice day for those two there. Uh, and then defensively there, we just uh, seen. Um, uh, we'll see. We had Taco had four tackles. He had a, a tackle on half. Uh, so uh, Demarcus Lawrence there, he had four tackles, tackle for loss, and a, and a sack and a half there for him. Uh, and then uh, Wilson had three tackles, a tackle for loss, and a sack. Um, and then uh, Brian Brian Jones there, two uh, sack or no, excuse me, two uh, interceptions uh, and six tackles in the game there from him and Pitta. Also have four, a sack with four tackles and a tackle for loss. Uh, so defense really did a great job there. They were able to score when we were wasn't able to. Uh, so that really got our family out of the fryer there, especially when we were tied 10 all. Uh, and then started things started just going our way there uh, once we got into the uh, you know the last few moments of the third, going to the fourth quarter there, where which really helped us out there, and that was nice. Um, so we'll see if that will. Uh, I mean, hopefully the defense will step up even more next week. And but we got to have that offense there. We got to get our offense to get going and score there, and uh, really do a better job of protecting um, Dak there. Uh, but then you take a look at some of the standings there. You see the Broncos right now, first place there in the AFC West and the NFC North. Uh, Packers there two and one, uh, and then the Bears, Vikings, and Lions are all two or one and two there. So. Uh, pretty a log jam there in that division there 
Uh, of course, it's known as the Black and Blue Division there. So <laughs> uh, you're going to see that quite often here uh, from season to season there with that division. Uh, NFC South, uh, there you see the Saints there, 3-0, and still marching on there. Uh, Panthers, 2-1. and Buccaneers, yep, yeah, we just gave them their third loss of the season there as they're 0-3. And the Falcons, 1-2 and there here this season. We'll play them here actually a couple weeks from now. Uh, 49ers, last year they were the worst team in the league. Well, now they're one of the best now as they're ranked 6 in the power rankings there. But they are 2-1 and one, along with the Cardinals and the Seahawks as the Rams right now are 0-3 uh, for the uh, for the season right now. So big change there uh, for those guys. Let's take a look at your top players of the week here. And there you see Jones there for the Cowboys there. Uh, like I said, four uh, tackles uh, there for him. Uh, he also had uh, two interceptions there for himself, one of them being a touchdown. So nice job there from him. Uh, Russell Wilson, your other your NFC offense. Then uh, AFC offense, you got Mark Marilla there on that one. Uh, so take a look here at the Colts. There you see the Colts have lost the first two game, first two weeks they've lost. Uh, you see against the Eagles, 27-10, and then 35-13 to the Dolphins. But they won a game against the Browns, and of course they, you know, everyone beats the Browns. But uh, there you see 33-28 now, a tight, close game there, uh, to say the least. So I'm kind of, kind of scratching my head now. Okay, Browns might actually have a decent team, uh, but it's only the third week, so I guess we can't get too too crazy about it but uh we'll take a look here at uh, the numbers there for the game and of course you got andrew luck who is the field general for that ball club there and uh you know he's not playing uh, like he had you know his first two seasons in nfl he's had you know of course some nagging injuries there um from last season and of course i guess this season he still has some um issues uh, with his throwing his shoulder and stuff like that but uh, we'll see here uh, some of the stats there from the game, but for the most part here, we're um, hoping we're hoping that this game will be uh, not as close and tight as uh, the game we just had with the Broncos there. But uh, to say the least, you know they're, they're a team that are looking for a win. They're you know they're one and two right now, uh, and it seems like teams that are having a loser losing record right now play a lot better against us. Um, uh, as opposed to the you know the opposite there, so um, teams that we should be having close games with, we're not necessarily having close games with, uh, and then teams that we are should be putting away, um, we're just not putting them away, you know, able to put them away. So um, don't know what the really the deal is there. Uh, among, I mean, I can think of a few things that's wrong with that uh, with us, but and the, when it comes to you know uh, those kind of types of games, but uh, for the most part here. Uh, yeah, uh, the Colts right now, uh, there you see they are in last place right now in the AFC South with the Jaguars playing some, and the Titans really playing some really good base or really good football right now. T uh, Texans right there, just right there with them with the one and two record. Uh, but uh, they, I think they have a couple of injuries there. I don't think there's too many key injuries uh, for them to really worry about. So it's just their gameplay right now. They're just not gelling as a team. Uh, and, then, and then, of course, that's going to happen uh, uh, at the beginning of the year, um, especially if you have some new parts to them like they have. So, yeah, right now they don't have any injuries right now. So everybody's pretty healthy, uh, which is a good thing, especially for Andrew Luck. You know, like I said last year, he missed quite a few games there. Um, and um, we'll have to uh, see if we can uh, what type of shape he's going to be in uh, playing us. So T.Y. Hill, of course, their top guy there for their ball club as he is a guy that we're gonna have to really watch out for 94 speed there and there you see his catch and all that kind of stuff there definitely a guy that we're gonna have to be focusing on when we come up to uh, there on on the uh, offensive side of the or the defensive side of the ball for us um, because after what happened last week with the Bucks there and along with uh, Mike Evans um, T.Y. Hill is a guy that we definitely cannot lose a track of. We do. It's going to be a very long day in the passing game there. So uh, we have to keep T.Y. Um, you know, uh, we're going to have to really, you know, just cause a lot of uh, issues with him, bump him. Um, when it comes to, you know, we might have to put maybe double coverage on him 
uh, to keep him, um, you know, in a way where we that um, luck there, as you see there, uh, is, isn't able to get a hold of him. So um, we're gonna have to really uh, just really confuse the coverages there on luck. And I mean, it's gonna be tough, especially against luck, because he's a pretty intelligent guy. You know, that's why the Colts brought him there. He's just like Peyton Manning. He has that, uh, you know, he can look at a defense and you know already have an idea how to carve you up so um, that's uh, something that we're gonna have to uh, try to do our best at uh, because if we don't like I said we don't want to have a repeat of what happened to us last week with Mike Evans and in this case uh, unlike Mike Evans he did who didn't get in the end zone um, T.Y. Hilton yeah he's a guy he's gonna get in the end zone so uh, we're gonna have to watch out for that here uh, coming up in the um, next uh, in, the, in this upcoming game, uh, you see Tevin Coleman, their uh, future back right now, the third year guy from Indiana. Take a look at his numbers there so far one touchdown so far on the ground, two broken tackles, and he has uh, 52 attempts now for, so far this season. As uh, he's been uh, not utilized so very as, as much uh, this year as he did uh, last year. I think last year was his, uh, as you see, yeah, he had a thousand yard. Uh, uh, rushing year, so um, he's capable of getting a thousand yards there. But uh, you know, this year is kind of slow. Uh, and then uh, Devon Davis, there you see there, nine-year man from Illinois, uh, the corner there, a uh, guy that again we're going to see and watch where he's at on the field. Um, he's one of those uh, young, upcoming uh, corners that can do some damage and cause some friction there uh, with our. Uh, um, with our off, with our receivers there, and and just cause a, just a just a just a cluster, just a disaster for us in the in the uh, team. So we'll see how that goes here coming up in uh, the next episode. Um, but take a look here. That's our game plan here. As you see, the Colts uh, like to run the cover two, uh, so we're going to walk work on deep passing like floods. Um, that is the game plan for us. Uh, they and of course on defensively they they like to put pressure on us. So we're gonna have to, um, you know, they're going to come at us. They're gonna be blitzing at us on all different angles. Um, uh, they just you know they because you know they if they have seen any footage on us and on uh, on Dak especially this season so far, it hasn't been a good one. It hasn't been a. Uh, you know, good season to uh, be Dak as he's had trouble, um, you know, um, staying uh, upright with his, you know, line not helping out him too much. Um, so, yeah, we're going to have to uh, watch out for that uh, blitzing there as you take a look there defensively. Um, Colts, uh, we, you know, like it says, we expect to see the Colts use uh, the Portland concept uh, 6% of the time. Um, so, the Past defenses, we're going to be in cover two there. We're going to have to uh, put some pressure on. We may put some – there's a couple of cover two blitzes that we're going to be uh, – we've been working on over this week there. So we're going to try to put pressure on on um, on on Luck there because, um, you know, his, he does – if you know, I mean, Colts do not have the best offensive line. Um, even when, when Brady or when uh, – uh, Peyton was there for a couple years there. The the offensive line was kind of weak, and it still is. Still brittle, um, but we're going to see if it's brittle enough to, so we can break it and get in there and get luck and uh, cause some problems. But like I said, he still has that uh, shoulder problem, which is uh, one of the things we read in the um, injury report this week. Uh, it's not, it's not as, uh, as significant as you think it would be because uh, it's not up on the screen, but uh, he is still being it's still being talked that he is uh he's not fully recovered uh yet he's probably about uh anywhere from 80 to 85 percent uh, recovered from uh, last year's injury so we'll have to see if that'll be the case uh, coming up here in week four so stay tuned for week four coming up here uh here on esg net of the cowboys franchise that video should be up um, I'm hoping sometime later on in the week. So, kind of busy this week, uh, getting, you know, kind of breaking the fourth wall here. Uh, kind of getting busy with uh, the end of the year uh, at my job because uh, I work at a, a local at a university working there, food services there. So it's gonna be kind of busy uh, trying to get things done, trying to wrap up stuff there, and then 
Also, I'm going on a trip to go see some family uh, right afterwards uh, on uh, the first weekend in May. So, trying to get a lot of things done here, trying to get a lot of videos up and going here for that week and whatnot. So, um, but I'm hoping to have the next episode for the Cowboys franchise, which will be the Colts, up uh, sometime. If uh, this video should be up on Tuesday, uh, I'm, I'm hoping sometime on um, Thursday or Friday to have the next uh, Cowboys episodes up for you guys. So. Uh, stay tuned for that, um, but uh, that is it for this episode for the Cowboys Insider, you guys. Again, stay tuned for week number four as we take on the one and two Colts coming up. If you guys enjoyed today's episode, please leave a like. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more Dallas Cowboys franchise here on ESGNet. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Discord for your latest being a part of or be a part of the ESGN Nation and get the latest news and events on what's going on here on the channel and what's going on in the world of sports and in sports gaming. So thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I will see you guys next time.